Hey you guys, how's everybody doing? I don't know how to start these, let's just get going. <laughs> We're going to be reading another book today. I've gotten pretty gosh darn good at turning these pages. I'm using a different phone, oh well, a different camera, it just so happens to be connected to a phone. And it's doing this autofocus thing. Uh, I haven't really prepared very much, which is kind of the story of all of my videos. So hopefully it doesn't like try to autofocus over and over again like that. We'll see. But we're going to be looking at this book. Maiden Voyage. With the camera autofocusing, it's going to feel like we're on a boat. <laughs> 14 easy to play jazz tunes. This is volume 54, the top. Impressions, B flat blues, solar flare, summertime, watermelon man, song for my father, satin doll, maiden voyage, F blues, cantaloupe island, footprints, doxy, autumn leaves, and uh, some Roman numerals. <laughs> Melodies, chords, transposed parts for all instrumentalists. A new approach to jazz improv 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 improvazo? improvisation <laughs> by Jamie Ambersold or something like that with a play along book and CD set. Well, this is a book and it has a CD set. It has a CD. I don't know when I got this book. This is another another book with, with an unknown history. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody got this for me because they said, hey, EG likes guitars. Let's get him a guitar book. I don't play jazz. I'm not a jazz instrumentalist. I don't think I would be good at it even if I want like wanted to be. I gotta I want to practice doing more with the pause, which takes more like concentration than you might think. This is the contents. Let's see here. Tuning track or CD track one, tuning notes, B flat and A. Tunings included in the volume. Well, those are the songs. I already read those. Introduction, Jamie's Notes, Practice Procedure, Nomenclature. That's a, I've always liked that word, nomenclature. Introduction to the Scale Syllabus. Scale Syllabus? Treble Clef, Bass Clef, Soloing, discra Discography, Jazz Guitar Voicings, and Additional Recordings. We've got concert key songs, chord scale progressions, and it's all kind of like, I mean, it's just focusing on all the same stuff. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Any codas that appear will be played only once on the recording at the end of the last recorded chorus. Rhythm section personnel and play along recording by Jamie. Tyrone Wheeler is on the bass, and Steve Davis is on the drums. This was published by Jamie Abersold. Abersold, maybe? I don't know if any of you folks know him. I don't know anything about him. Like I said, I don't know what the history of this book is. Like where, where I got it or something. Like that. My recording setup is practically the same as the last the last one I did. So it's not great. I just have a better camera and a better feeling for like how to hold the pages and stuff. I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it. Okay. This collection is a bit different than most tunes that have appeared on earlier volumes of the Aversold Play Along series, but here they have been recorded with the beginner especially in mind. 
After you've mastered these tunes and the versions heard here, you may... Oh, I'm hitting the microphone with the... Sorry. <laughs> you may want to try out your chops on different versions heard here or on other Abersold's uh, recordings. Summertime is a deceptively simple tune, which is probably, probably why everyone from rock groups to opera singers have recorded it. Autumn Leaves' appeal isn't quite as universal, but for every version inspired by the singer, or the, excuse me, the late Miles Davis, there has been one played on a florid cocktail piano style. Satin Doll has been played into the ground, but public, by the, but the public and plenty of musicians still find things in it for almost four decades after it was recorded. I think that you'll find that when you're when you feel comfortable playing all the, the sections in the album you'll be ready to tackle many real life situations as well as playing the tunes with more difficult chord changes songs these songs are the backbone of jazz jam sessions can anybody, can anybody uh, verify that oh this was this book by the way this book was made in 1992 that's something that Phil Bailey said in 91 so I'm I'm reading this through the cameras, um, like through my phone. So it, to to actually read it on the book, I have to like lean over here, and it's it's awkward. And then I'm like up here, I'm hitting the microphone, and I I gotta get a new tripod. A, a new tripod will fix this completely, but I'm kind of I'm working with what I got. There are three supplemental books aligned with volume 54 book recording. They are volume 54 piano voicings transcribed by the recording, volume 54 bass lines transcribed by, uh, for the recording. I say by the recording or for the recording. You can actually see what's being played each of these instruments. Write or call for more, uh, for complete information. You guys want to write this man a letter? The practice procedure for memorizing scales and chords to any songs. Now in the last video we looked at, uh, I don't have it around me right now, but we looked at another like teach you how to play guitar, teach you how to be a musician book, and everybody has their own authoritative style and procedure it's funny they're like this is the best way there is no other way and um, I rambled a lot on the last video and I cut most of it out but I think I might leave this ramble in um, I, I, I personally find that any sort of like authoritative this is how you do it and there's no other way I find that that style of advice incredibly harmful and toxic to new musicians. I fell for a lot of those, um, like really bad tutors and I didn't have a tutor, but I, I watched a lot. I consumed a lot of content. And I think, um, by and large, the people that were trying to instruct you and tutor you were the worst by far. I learned the most just by watching musicians and, and listening to people play their style like Paul Gilbert and, um, Nuno Betancourt and just like really proficient guitarists not teaching you but just playing and talking about their style I learned more about playing guitar from them than any of these like instructors maybe that's just my style but let's learn about the practice prestige pr prestige procedure for memorizing scales play the first note root tonic note of each chord or scale. Play the first two notes of each side. Play the first three notes of each scale. Oh boy, I said side, not scale. Play the first five notes of each scale. Play triads, one, three, and five of the scale. Play seventh chords, one, three, five, and seventh tones of each scale. Play the ninth chords, one, three, five, seven, and ninth tones of each scale. Play the entire scale up and down. Play sixth chords, one, three, five, 
and sixth tones of the scale. Play up scale to the ninth and back down to the chord tones. Play the ninth chord and then come back down to the scale. Play in broken thirds, up and down, one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, six, eight, seven, nine, eight, then backwards. If you were to use the above procedure for the 12 bar blues, you would need 12 choruses to complete all 12 exercises. By the 12th chorus, your mind will be hearing the chord scale progression in advance. Your fingers will begin to go to the right notes automatically without having to tell them, boy, I have a very difficult time just reading this and not, not telling you guys how I feel about this stuff. I'm just going to read. I'm not going to ramble for better and worse. After you get good enough, you won't have to go through this type of procedure on every song. Your mind will be accustomed to the scales and chords, and your subconscious mind will direct your fingers via your imagination. It really works, but you have to do a certain amount of homework first. Listening to jazz, good jazz, can cut down on the time it takes to produce satisfying results. If you haven't already looked at Volume 1, I strongly suggest examining it carefully as it contains many chapters concerning the development of strong solos, melodies, and jazz phrases. The stacked, the stacked chords, which sometimes appear in the solo section, represents the root, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth, ninth notes of the scale. Let's see what's next. I'm okay with these videos just kind of going on forever. Oh my gosh, when I was looking through the viewfinder, I thought I wrote all that. And the typeface made it look like it was handwriting. I'm like, I do not remember that. And I don't remember it because I didn't do it. This is, this is not my style. <laughs> this is way beyond me. I'm sure, I'm sure there's plenty of you watching and listening that know this stuff. But this is all like magic to me. Yeah, there's, I don't know very much of this at all. I know what a major is. <laughs> I know what a minor is. All right. I'm going to keep it on the ground for this one on the table. <laughs> because jazz players, composers, educators, and authors haven't agreed on a on common, common, oh, common nomenclature for writing chords, and scale symbols, the novice will have to become familiar with several different ways of writing the same scale sound. Listed below are the most common signals, symbols, oh my goodness, I'm having a rough time reading this morning. The most common symbols in order of usage, most used to the least used. The symbol that is bold-faced is the one I use most often. Notice that throughout the book you can see it looks like CA, but it's like C triangle. You will see C triangle is probably a, a word for that. And C to designate a major chord scale sound. I'm doing this so that you can begin to get better acquainted with the various nomenclature. That triangle thing, major scale chord or major seventh, uh, A seventh. This is hard to read out loud because there's all these like symbols and stuff. I'm going to skip that. <laughs> oh, this bottom part looks good. Well, let me see if I can get this up closer to you. I know I said it was going to stay on the table, but it's, it's actually easier to read. I don't know if it's like the typeface or the way that the book was printed or something, but um, I might just be having a hard time reading this morning. That's, that could definitely be it. Uh, when we speak of quality, we mean whether it's major, minor, dim, diminished, or whatever. I've tried to standardize the scale, the chord scale symbol notation in my books, but some have been out many years, and there are instances where I may have used different chord symbol in one book than I used in this one. 
I feel that the improviser needs as little notation as possible in order to transcend the actual nomenclature ah, on the page. Man, this book is not easy to... It's kind of a more flimsy paperback, or yeah, paperback, which is fine. It's just hard to work with in this format as all. Well. Remember, seconds are the same as ninths. Fourths are the same as elevenths. Thirteenths are the same as sixth. For example, the key of C, the second, D, is the same as the ninth, D. Often a composer will simply write their preferred name of the scale, he, they, prefer, besides the chord signals. This was the 90s, so. I, I, I can understand what he's saying there. If, if I was getting into music, I, would have, I wouldn't be able to follow, but I, I think I understand what he's trying to say. I, I, don't, I just don't think I'm a very good like, student. I've, I've never done well in school, so even, even books like these that are trying to teach you how to do something, they just, they're kind of lost on me. Ah, okay. Each chord scale symbol represents a series of tones which the improviser can use while improvising or soloing. I think we've, I think I've read that like three times now. <laughs> All right, Jamie, we got it. Yes. These series of tones have traditionally been called scales. The scales listed here are the ones I hear most often. No, the ones I hear, the ones... The scales listed here are the ones I most often hear musicians play. Boy, I had a hard time with that one. I've listed the scale syllabus in the C in the key of C concert. So you can have a frame of reference and compare the similarities and differences between the various chords and scales. The scale syllabus is intended to give the improviser a variety of scale choices, which may be used over any chord, major, minor, dominant, seventh, half diminished, diminished, and sus four. Western music, especially jazz and pop, use major, dominant seventh, Dorian minor, and blues scales, and chords more than any other. That is definitely true. Not that there was any doubt, but like I, I yeah, I, I remember when, ah, no rambles, just reading. Scales and chords used less often are half diminished, mint diminished, and sus four. If we agree on these five chord scale families being the most predominant, then we can set them up as categories and list substitute scales beneath each heading. See the scale syllabus page. You should also check out volume 26, the scale syllabus, for more help with scales. Each category begins with the scale most closely resembling the chord scale symbol up to the left. <clears throat> the scales are arranged according to the degree of dissonance they produce in relation to the basic chord scale sounds. Scales near the top of the category will sound mild or constant. Consonant? Consonant. Yeah, that's it. And scale choices further down the list will become increasingly tense and dissonant. Each player is urged to start with scales at the top and practice with experimentation and gradually work their way down the list to the most dissonant or tension-producing scales. You should work with the new scale sound on your instrument until your ears and fingers become comfortable with all of the tones in the scale. Also, try singing the scale with your voice. I have an absolutely terrible, terrible sense of pitch when I'm singing. I really enjoy singing, and I think that I can be pretty good under the right, like, with the right song playing. But just trying to sing along to a scale without anything, I, I have absolutely no ability to do at all. Music made of music is made of tension and release. Scale tones produce tension, or they produce relaxation. The improviser's ability to control the amount of uh, the amount and frequency of tension and release 
will... Let me try that again. Music is made of tension and release. Scale tones produce tension or they produce relaxation. The improviser's ability to control the amount and frequency of tension and release will, in large measure, determine whether they are successful in communicating to the listener. Remember, you, the player, are also a listener. What do we got here? Several play along several play along sets offer you the opportunity to practice the various scales in all twelve keys. They are volume twenty four, major minor, also an album by Thrice. Volume twenty one, getting it together. Volume sixteen, turnaround cycles and uh, some symbols. <laughs> scales and chords are the backbones of our scales and chords are the backbone of our music and better equip yourself and the better you equip yourself the more fun you will have playing music. So you may have noticed the papers back here. Let's go ahead and take these out. I don't I'm I'm going to guess Oh boy. Well, that looks like EG handwriting. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. I don't remember doing this. I'll get some uh, paper sounds. These, uh, this actually doesn't produce very much sound. How about this? The microphones are also pointing away from it, though, so let's see if I can get just one. There we go. Nothing on the back. These sounds sound a little harsh in the monitor, so I don't know if... I don't know if these are going to make the best sounds. This paper's pretty old. I like, can't even... Yeah. I'm trying to get... There we go, I got one. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> there we go. Now I have... But one sheet of crinkly paper. <laughs> Let's get this out of here. Let's try to put it all back. There we go. All right, let's put this away. Here's a whole bunch of names. This is discography. They kind of manhandle this this book here. There we go. Kind of like this isn't even this, this is okay, I guess. Oh, I don't know if I want to read names actually. Let's just read the names of like. Let's do the easy stuff. Doxy, 1954, music by Sonny Rollins, introduced by Miles Davis and Sonny Rollins, with Sonny Rollins, rather. Does it say, what, like, what is it? Muse, Concord, Columbia, Contemporary, Georgia Cables? What, I don't know what these are. <laughs> Impressions, Maiden Voyage, 1965, Satin Doll. 1953. So what? The song is not about this. Wait, this? Oh. <laughs> so what? 1954. This song is not in the book. The chord progression is the same as impressions, so we've listed them. Okay. That, that works, I guess. Let's see what else is in here. I 
I don't know if it's the paper that this book is made of or what, but it's really hard to turn the pages. I know the, the last video I did like this one, I was turning the pages mostly in frame, but like, I don't know, it's the pages are really rough. And it's, it's almost like they want to stick together, but they're not sticky, if that makes sense. It's just a very unwieldy book. <laughs> okay, let's try reading that right here. If you want to learn to play jazz, you have to listen, listen, listen. But many times, students don't have any idea what recordings to buy. So we've created this list of 108 of the most important recordings in jazz. That's actually kind of cool. I, I like that. This is due to the strong influence this particular period of music has had on current modern jazz scene today. We've purposely omitted a number of very early recordings because one, many of those early recordings had very poor sound quality. Two, the artists record lots of material and so they are represented by later recordings elsewhere on the list and or early recordings are not currently available in CDs so if you have a turntable you should start checking out yard sales and thrift stores. Often you can find classic jazz recordings on vinyl for next to nothing. That's cool. You guys like vinyl? I just like music in general. <laughs> Whether it's vinyl, cassette tape seems to be making a comeback. Though cassette tapes are more of a, like a novelty thing. A lot of time like the cassette tape looks cool or the packaging it comes in looks cool. You want to support an artist. I don't know if you'd really listen. It's not like vinyl where a lot of times you could listen to a vinyl record and maybe the sound quality is better. I don't think that's the same with cassette. I don't. I really don't think you're going to hear like better quality on a cassette tape versus like a CD. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I've, I've never heard of that, though. For each record listed, you can see the artist's name followed by the name of the album. All of these recordings are available on CD at press time from uh, Double Time Records. The number, the number to the left of each recording, like CD number 726, indicates uh, the Double Time catalog number for that CD. Now remember, this is like way before internet or anything. So if if you actually like wanted to buy some of these records, you would have to like mail in something. This was uh, a little bit before my time. And anymore, I can't imagine just like sending, you know, like 20 bucks with, you know, a CD listing and just like hoping you'll get something back. I, I mean, that that's just how things used to be with mail order stuff. You just like mail in a check or, I mean, I guess if it was a check and it didn't get cashed, but still that just, that seems silly. Like, oh, I've got like 50 bucks just floating out there waiting to be cashed. And then people have bounce checks and stuff. It's just kind of, a, it's a mess. And to be honest, it feels like a bit of a racket. It's, it works really well in the favor of the banks charging fees for people you know, having low balances and bouncing checks and stuff. All right. Come on now. There we go. I can't. I'm going to flip it over, actually. Okay. I know this is a little hard on the book, but <laughs> it is not cooperating for this video. Stay. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's try to get through these last two pages. Check out these companion books for volume 54. Volume 54 transcribed piano voicings. This book contains every voicing and chord exactly as played by Jamie Azer, Azer sold <laughs> on the volume 54 recording. Every note is accurately transcribed and notated for both hands. This is a must for anyone wanting to learn how things sound. Yeah. An, an indispensable book with professional jazz voicings, comping, rhythms, and leading tones to the chord progressions B-flat and F-blues. 
summertime, satin doll, autumn breeze, solar flare, watermelon man, song from my father, cantaloupe island, impressions, maiden voyage, doxy, footprints, and uh, some Roman numerals. <laughs> Volume 54, Transcribed Bass Lines. This book contains the transcribed bass lines as played by Tyrone Wheeler in volume 54 of recordings. An important study in bass line construction over jazz standards. Chord symbols are written above each measure, each note and rhythm in, as in this book. It is an excellent for novice bassists and educators who need help in establishing what good bass lines sound and look like. Combo instructors will want this book to give to their bass students instant professional sounding bass lines. Volume 54 Jazz Drums Style and Analysis. Okay. Essential beginning intermediate drum play along tracks with Volume 54 Maiden Voyage. Special stereo separation allows a drum track to be eliminated so you can sit in with piano and bass. Songs every drummer should know represents a variety of forms, feels, and tempos. Steve Davis gives clear, uh, careful, concise explanations and transcriptions of the volume 54 drum tracks. He discusses style, grooves, form, and overall approach. Educators will love this set. It is a helpful tool for pointing young drummers in the right direction. And let's see if we can get the very last page. I think it's like just a bunch of ads, but that's fun. Old ads from the 90s. All right, got it. Oh, there's the CD. It's just like a blue CD with a red boat on it, basically. Okay, here we go. There, that wasn't so bad. There, now we can hold it old school style. Just get a good handle on it. Hit the microphone again, of course. Jamie Abersolds, University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky. Two great weeks of jazz. Get professional instruction combo improv th theory. All right, and now the big question, should any of you folks attend? These workshops, these workshops are for serious and mature adult jazz students, no matter your instrument level. So if I rolled in there in suit and I said that I want to learn jazz, would they take me seriously? It says there is no age limit, even though it says adult right there. Why does it blur out? Look at that. Hmm. I still got to figure out how this camera works. I must have something set up wrong. A week with us could change your life. And that, folks, is where we're going to leave this. Let's tap over here. These claws are actually made of clay. I, I may have talked about that in another video. But they're they're very rigid and they act they're pretty handy for some books. Yeah, see this book is just mean. It, it does not look at this. It just does not want to work with me. The other book was pretty nice and I could get my claw in between the pages and flip them. But this this book is just like look at this. I can't I can't like even I'm like turning pushing the whole thing. So. I've had this book for a while, and after I did the last uh, reading video, I thought that it would be fun to do another one. I turned the page so I had something to kind of tap on without making a whole bunch of noise. As I've talked about before in other videos, I have dyslexia. I also have ADHD probably closer to like just ADD, but I don't talk about that one as much because I think a lot of people have it and a lot of people already kind of know the symptoms and what it's like to have ADD and ADHD. 
I don't think people talk about dyslexia nearly enough. And for some reason, I was really struggling reading this. I did a lot of different cuts and well, there, there will be cups, cuts, but I did a lot of different takes and they still weren't very good. And sometimes that's just how reading is for me. No matter how many times I try, it just like my, my brain just like won't connect. But you know, I guess that's why this channel is called Open EG. So I'm kind of like being open. I don't know. But sometimes that's just how it is. I don't mind reading for you guys. I don't, I, I read silently on my own and it's, it's always like, um, historical stuff. I'm not really into fiction. I'm definitely not into this stuff, but I think that it makes good reading. I think that the words that they use are really good for just kind of listening to. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that my mistakes and stutters weren't too disruptive. And I've got a whole slew of other books that I want to look at. And um, doing these is not only, uh, it's, it, it's pretty fun, honestly, doing this with gloves and do it trying to turn the page with pause and everything is, is, uh, it's a challenge, but it's fun. I think that this is improving my, my reading ability. <laughs> so I like that, but it also gives me time and like, I'm using these videos to kind of dial in. I've got a mic over here. You can't see, well, the camera is on that side, but the mic is, the mic is over there and there's a mic over there and I've got my tripod and I'm figuring out this camera. So as I say in almost every video, this is just an experiment and I'm learning as I go. I'm anything but a professional, let alone good at any of this stuff, but that's what it is. And I hope that you guys enjoy it. And I look forward to making the next open EG video for you. As I know that so many of you guys really appreciate these videos and you know what? I appreciate you. I appreciate you a lot. And I look forward to seeing you all in the comments of this video and making the next video just for you. See you guys later. Bye-bye.